I found a castle, but it's too large. For this build, I'm taking some inspiration from Turku Castle. We're building a large tower with one wing, and then you'll see how to make a simple copper roof. I started by preparing these wall-sized pieces of XPS insulation foam. First, I'm measuring the pieces for the large tower. This will be 10 cm long. I just cut them with my knife. The tower is going to be 3 stories high, so I cut a total of 12 10 cm pieces. This is how the wall segments will be laid out. It will look a bit like this, but first, the other pieces. The wing will be 12 cm long and about 8 cm wide, so I cut 5 cm pieces for the shorter walls. I will not get that accurate cuts with the way I'm doing this, but hey, I don't take myself too seriously. Alright, it's time to glue the pieces together. I used PVA glue and cocktail sticks to easily attach the foam pieces. To save some time, you could definitely use a hot glue gun as well. Nice, there we have the tower pieces. Let's move to the wing. The wing will be two stories high, as you can see here. Okay, I will quickly show you how to make the stone wall textures. First, I cut the outlines of the stones with a craft knife. Then I used a pencil to carve in deep wood grooves. You can press in the edges of the stones with the side of the pencil. And also make cracks on some of the stones. For the next step, we will need a ball of aluminum foil. Use plenty of force to apply textures to the foam. You get rougher textures if you use a thicker foil, like the one I'm using, and it will last longer. Luckily, I won't have to make any doors, since I can clip on the modular doors I made in the last episode. Learn how to craft them here. Alright, time to get cozy. I lit a candle to heighten the mood. Then I took a... needle? And heated it above the flame. Definitely do this at home. Right, we're making windows. I used the hot needle to cut out the windows, instead of fiddling around with a knife. Here we have some cocktail sticks again. I glued in the sticks as the frames of the windows, just like this. I made a few more different shaped windows, and I made no windows for the lower level of the castle. Also to make sure that the castle is modular enough, I only made windows on two sides of a level. For the roof, we will use four triangles cut out from cardstock. Now that we have these four triangles, we will need these smaller pieces to connect them. To get started, I glued two triangles together and bent the small piece connecting them. Now I have two of these. I will attempt to glue them together with the smaller pieces. It can be a bit tricky. I had to hold them in place for a minute before letting go. Okay, for the smaller roof we will quickly make a stone wall that will go under the roof. I took a piece of the same foam and cut it into a shape that will be suitable for the roof. I also figured out it's easier to do this step with the round end of a small paintbrush. There we go, now let's cut the cardstock pieces.
They will be glued on like this, but first, let's cut the other piece. I'll just put some PVA glue on these surfaces, and then we'll try to hold everything in place. This piece doesn't have to be textured, it won't be visible. Now we're making the strips that go along the roofs. I cut the strips from cardstock, folded them in the middle, and then cut corners in an angle like this. I used this strip as a model for the others. I glued them on with plenty of glue and made sure that the top of the strips fit together. And of course, some more glue to add strength. For the smaller roof, I added a similar strip on the top. Even though we are just using cardstock, the roofs are already pretty sturdy at this point. Anyway, we're adding more strips. I glued on four strips per side of the small roof. I didn't take any measurements, but this seems pretty even. The strips for the bigger roof have to be cut at an angle, like this. After attaching all the strips, it should look something like this. And now, it's time to paint. In hindsight, I think you could get better results by painting with only a copper paint. Now the paint has dried, we will apply a wash. This wash is supposed to be the color of corroded copper. I made it by mixing blue and green acrylic paints in water. I applied one layer of wash and waited for it to dry. Later, I applied one coat of the same wash. I'm pretty happy with the results. This looks nice. Now let's paint the rest. I base painted the stone with black. I added a bit of water to the paint so it goes into the grooves with less effort. Now let's dry brush with grey. I removed most of the paint from the brush and lightly brushed the stone surface. A good tip for dry brushing surfaces like this is to use the side of the brush rather than the end of the bristles of the brush. As you can see, I made much simpler textures for the inner sides, because they will not be visible that often and it would be too difficult to carve the stones on the inside. Then I proceeded by dry brushing with a lighter grey. It's almost white. And of course, we have not forgotten this piece. But wait, there are still things to paint. Let's paint the frames or bars of the windows with gunmetal. This is a metallic paint by Army Painter. Now we're trying to paint rust. First I painted some spot with brown. Next I added some yellow spots. Then some red spots. And finally I evened it out with the same brown. I don't know what I'm doing. Looks okay I guess. Yeah. Alright, let's assemble the castle keep. This is fairly easy to set up and disassemble. As you can imagine, you can assemble this in many ways, and combine it with other similar terrain. I never thought of making a roof like this before looking at real buildings. Sometimes you just get inspiration from the outside. By adding a door on a higher level, we can do things like this. These are the basic castle walls I made a few episodes back. So there you go, the castle key. This was almost painful to record. I have been sick. Hope you liked it anyway. Yeah, you probably did, so do subscribe, or go check out my Patreon. My goal is to keep making better videos until I get you. Anyway, I also offer you things on Patreon, such as 5th edition spell expansions and my custom monster manual. I'll see you in the next video, thanks and goodbye.